All right. So, um, yes, uh, what you'll have to do is first uh, actually set up your private Git repositories. And then after that, with your private Git repository, whatever changes you make on your local uh, repos that you fetch from the staff's uh, uh, staff's repo, uh, whatever thing, you need to configure it with your private repo and push it to that. Um, a simple git clone will not work just because the way in which it is set up is that first um, it will clone everything and you will not face any problems. But when you try to push using just a git clone interface, what's going to happen is it's just going to uh, try pushing it to the staff's implementation of your OS 161, and you guys don't have the permission. So a simple git clone will not work. Just to show you an uh, example, um, what I'll do here is the same stuff. So I'll go to like oops class. Um, Okay, so the assignments, and in your assignment zero, here's the link for uh, the Git repository, right? Okay, I paste this thing here. And it clones into OS 161. Now I go here, and for example, I do some changes in something else. Okay, I just change maybe one small symbol here, and then git add whatever git commit m. I'll give something, and then git push origin master. It lasts me things like these, which uh, maybe I'll just give my name. And I don't know the password, because I'm not a registered user. And it will say, like, authentication failed. So what I did just now is a simple git clone. That didn't work. What you'll actually have to do is, OK, so I remove OS 161, OK? And I create a new directory. Okay, I'll call it new OS 161 mkdir new OS 161, and I'll go here. I'll initialize git here. Okay, and I'll add a remote game and um, add, and I'll call this thing origin. And what is this? This is uh, where things come from, right? So I paste it here. Now I'll add another remote. Yeah. Yep. Um, so can you also teach like, how to add SSH keys? Because I guess most of the students haven't done that. Uh, like how to? Like add SSH keys. Add SSH yeah. key. Or create and create an OK. Remote. Cool. OK, that's a good point. OK, so how to add an SSH key? I'll first uh, come back. OK, fine, cool, awesome. So um, OK, just for reference sake, what I'll do is I'll just sign into my account. And uh, OK, so I, so after I sign into my GitLab instance, I create a new project. So I'll go to, uh, OK, this is my dashboard, right? Projects. I'll create a new project here. Um, this is be, let, let it be my private, uh, OK, it has to be a private project. And I'll call it like new OS 161, OK? I create a project. 
Now it's giving me instructions what to do here, right? So create a new repository or uh, existing folder or git repository. So what I'll have to do is follow the second instruction here. That is, I need to git init first and then git remote add things and then push it to this. So the way in which I have set up things is I have my local instance here. That is my local directory, which is new OS 161. I pull from the origin, as you can see the name here, like origin, and I'll add one more thing. Okay, git remote add, and I'll call this thing as my OS 161. Okay, and what is the path for this? This is the path, right? I copy this, I paste it here, I hit enter. Now I have two remotes which are associated with my directory that I'm working with. Okay, so all I need to do is git pull. So git um, um, pull origin master. Let's see if this thing succeeds. Okay, it did. So I have all my configuration files here. And if I'll have to make any changes, so I'll go to like config, I'll make some changes here. I'll just remove this stuff. Okay, just, just ra some random changes. Git add, and after I git add, I git commit, and give it a random message, something. And then git push uh, my OS 161, okay? Uh, and I'll give it a name master. Let's say yes. Um, could not read. Please make sure you have the contact access right. The authentic the authentication of your cannot be right. Okay. Um, the reason being that is because, as Bridges pointed out, I don't have the proper SSH keys, I guess. Um, or wait, git push upstream master permission denied public key as you can see like may, you guys would get this error right so all i'll need to do is um i'll have to generate a new ssh key so that it uh, uh can be uploaded to my gitlab instance i've already generated that but just in case if you guys are interested uh to generate that just use this command ssh keygen okay uh, you guys hit enter because it's already generated okay what i'll do is i'll run that command but i'll just make a backup copy of my ssh keys so ssh okay i'll move my dot ssh to um Backup SSH. Okay. LS minus LA dot SSH. There is nothing here. Okay, cool. So I'll run that command again. So enter the file in which you want to save the keys. Okay, it's giving me a default option like dot SSH ID RSA. Fine. Um, and then I don't want any passphrase. No passphrases again. This is just some random art which it has chosen based upon some random clock generations. And uh, yeah, your SSH keys would be there present in your .ssh directory. So you can find two keys. ID RSA is your private key. You're not supposed to share that with anybody. And your ID RSA.pub is your public key. All you'll have to do is go to your GitLab page and there go to settings and in settings um, or not the project settings right it's just your private settings so where is it yeah in GitLab um, profile settings yes so you can find an option here called SSH keys um, I'll add my SSH keys here so I'll cat this thing. OK. 
okay whatever content has been generated here um, copy that paste it here cool awesome but why is there a line I don't want the line um, ID underscore RSA public yes okay All right. Okay. Anyway, um, and I'll call this thing as um, recitation. Okay. I add my keys, and it's all fine here. So what I do is, yep. Um, all my SSH is configured properly, right? So um, I'll jump back to my new OS 161 directory again, and then I made changes here, right? So to see the stuff that I made, uh, so my git status is I'm on branch master and nothing to commit. So it basically means that um, I have already done all my commits properly. So as you can see here, my commit is visible here. Now I'll just have to like push to upstream. So git push um, upstream and what are the names? Yes, my OS 161 and I'll push it to the master thing. I just type in yes and it permanently added stuffs and hoping things work and yes, it did work. So. Um, Maybe that gave you a gist about how to go about setting up your SSH keys. The command that you just have to use is SSH key gen. That's it. And it will lead you through the rest of the procedures. All right? So once when you get things done and set up like this, uh, you're all, like, all set to go about developing things. OK, any questions? Did, are, are you guys clear or uh, just? you know whatever whatever questions you guys have could ask yep um this should be done by friday i mean your entire assignment zero should be completed by friday yes okay so uh if you guys don't have any questions right i'll move on to the next uh, portion of gdb so just a quick question how are you guys actually setting things up are you guys setting things up as uh, on, on your native machine itself using PPA or Vagrant? Vagrant? Okay, cool. Cool. Okay, because sometimes you guys might have issues when you're setting things up on your native machines. So it's good to have a Vagrant installation. Um, what, what uh, well, possibly nothing wrong will happen. But sometimes in case, you know, just your path variables or something are configured differently, then um, maybe if for some reason you have some old OS 161 version lurking somewhere in your system, right, then it might get confused with those path variables and a wrong sys 161 simulators might be called. Many, many such sim things like these could happen. So because of that, um, if you have just like, you know, virtual machine instances, that does only one thing really well, then uh, that's what your guys. Th th that's what is the most optimum way of going about doing things. Yep. Um, say that again. So why is 15.04 not recommended? No, uh, for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. It supports the 14th. Yeah, I mean, um, are, are you able to like configure everything properly? Is everything working all right as of now? Okay, then you you can just like continue doing that stuff as long as uh, you don't encounter any errors. But in case you encounter any errors, right? I mean, it will take a very long time to us to debug as to why exactly things aren't working um, because. Uh, when we were setting up this Vagrant, we had some issues with the Tmux version. 
So even the versions of some particular softwares might have issues like while compiling stuffs. So um, we have tested our stuffs well on Ubuntu 14.04, the L LTS edition. But with the other things, you guys could go about experiment with it, uh, experiment with it. But just in case if it doesn't work, then uh, <laughs> uh, maybe we can fix it. Maybe we cannot fix it. We don't know. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, back to our stuffs. What we were doing. All right. So uh, my next uh, objective right now is to show you how GDB works. Uh, so what I did was I set up a Vagrant installation. Where did I do that? OK. This should be in, is it in desktop? Oh, no, it's in OS 161. So here, I have a Vagrant installation. And I have a Vagrant file here. All I need to do is just call Vagrant SSH. That's it. I'm logged into my system here. OK. Um, to go about experimenting with uh, GDB, right? you'll have to have a minimum of two terminals open. So I'll open up another terminal. So I'll log into my machine here. All right. Now I'll change the font. Actually, like here at greenday.csc. Dot. Okay, I'll change the color. Um, change settings, appearance. OK, cool. I mean, it works, though. I think it's in here. I don't know what's going to So here, I will go to OS 161. And here, I will go to my Vagrant file, Vagrant SSH. All right, so I have two terminals set up here. Um, um, what I'll do here is okay. You guys know how to like compile uh, and then you know create your root directory and to create your kernel images, right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go through that again because all that is pretty straightforward in the assignment zero description. So once yeah. when you generate your uh, root directory, once when you generate everything fine, you'll get all these files populated under the root directory. And the most important stuff that you'll end up working with always is your linked file called kernel. OK? So uh, whatever simulations you do here, that I'll, I'll, I'll just start my sys161 system simulator here on the kernel, logged by another process. Oh, um, hmm. Oh, it's because I left uh, the kernel running on my host system in my lab. So what I'll do is exit this. OK, man vagrant. OK, vagrant help. I'm trying to like destroy those things that I created. Like reload, restart Vagrant machine. OK, yeah. Maybe I'll reload stuff. Vagrant um, reload. Oh, 
Okay. So once when the machine boots, we will try SS searching into it again. All right, awesome. So vagrant SSH and vagrant SSH. So I have two terminals here. And I'll go to my root directory. And in my root directory, hope it works, sys 161 kernel. OK, cool. My kernel is booted right now. So once when your kernel is booted and everything works fine, this is the kind of uh, output that you get. OK? So I'm in my system simulator of my kernel. All right? And um, all these are the commands that uh, you can test things out with. And uh, you can, yeah, just, just browse around this stuff. And once when you get your assignment 0, everything properly set up, this is what uh, you'll see. OK. So I'll show you just quickly how to go about using GDB. So um, when you look at the manual pages for Sys 161, right, um, you can see that there's a particular option, which is uh, this thing, like minus W, and it'll wait for a debugger connection. OK? So you can attach a debugger to your kernel. So um, the, the OS161 documentation says properly that uh, in order for you to debug the kernel, your sys161 needs to be running in the background. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm running my sys161. And I'm running the kernel on top of the sys161 and making the sys161 simulator wait for a debugger. OK, so it's waiting for a debugger. I switch to my second window. And I should always make sure that I'm in the same directory where my kernel file is. And here, I uh, just start OS161 um, GDB. And uh, yes, and here, um, what's the command that was stated online? <coughs> Some target, right? Target remote um, Unix forward slash socket. I don't, I don't remember it properly. Could somebody like just find it out? Target, right? OK, yeah, this, this is it. Dot sockets slash GDB. So it's dot sockets slash GDB. OK, cool, awesome. So I go back to this window. And um, before, it was saying that it was waiting for a debugger connection. Now it says that uh, the debugger is actually connected. So I'll just. Uh, you know, uh, there's a command in GDB called continue. So what it'll do is it'll continue from your debugger. It'll make the uh, sys161 to continue. So uh, well, it's continuing. It's well and fine. Maybe here, I'll generate a new panic. And I get the output messages from my debugger here that uh, uh, the program has received a signal trap. I can do many other interesting things from my GDB as well. For example, I can see like back trace. Okay, I can see like how the you know the stacks or the frames are actually organized and how to go about debugging things in a more effective manner. Um, what I'll do right now is just like temporarily set a breakpoint. Okay, I'll just set a break at uh, panic. If I encountered panic or, oh, wait. I'll just restart this again. OK, and I'll target remote. Yes. And uh, 
break at exception no symbol table is loaded uh, I'll just put yes okay I'll just continue okay now it continued and uh, um, well for some reason that stuff isn't working properly I don't know for what reason um, okay I'll show you like certain other commands as well you can do from GDB um, this is the target remote I showed you continue right you can step into things so continue and step are two different things continue keeps on continuing until the next big point and uh, um, step just steps through different things like once when a breakpoint is actually encountered so I don't know like why is this thing not setting up breakpoints oh okay I got it OS1 GDB kernel right so I quit here yes OS1 yeah this is what I didn't do alright so target remote unix forward sockets um, what was this stuff gdb gdb okay and i come here okay cool awesome so I can set breakpoints like this. I'll set a breakpoint at uh, okay. Now I'm getting like auto suggest options when I hit the tab button. I'll set a breakpoint at panic, and I'll just continue until the panic is encountered. So uh, I just hit question mark and different things here, and I'll generate a panic from my kernel. Oops. And you see, I got the breakpoint. Now I can backtrace things and look at stuff. Anyway, um, since the time is already up, um, I would stop my explanation here, and you know, just go about experimenting with GDB features. And uh, Git and GDB are very important tools to play around with in your assignments. All right. Thank you.